Well, hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here with us today. My name is Matt Garvey. I'm the VP of Communications for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, and we are thrilled to be here in Oxford today to extend the official invitation to the Old Miss Rebels to play against Penn State in this year's Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Uh, so we'll have, uh, I'm going to introduce Gary Stoken here in a minute, the CEO of the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, give you an overview of, of our game and the matchup that we've got, and then he'll have the official letter of invitation for Keith. And then we'll invite Coach up to make some comments and, and then uh, hopefully have a little time for some short Q&A at the end. So uh, thanks for being here. We're excited to have the Rebels. And Gary? Thanks, Matt. Pleasure to be here. And we welcome all of you to Atlanta, the capital of college football. Uh, please come over and visit with us. We look forward to hosting you. If I can, let me introduce a couple of people that we have. You met Matt Garvey, our Vice President of Communications, who will help you with all your needs. During Bull Week, uh, David Epps is our COO and Vice President of Marketing is here, and Keith Hester, who's the Director of Sports Marketing at Chick-fil-A. So, And he's the guy that bought lunch today. So we welcome you guys to have Chick-fil-A afterwards. Um, let me thank uh, Keith and uh, also Kyle and Lane for their hospitality and also congratulate them on a 10-2 great season, losing to only number four and number six. And uh, this is a game of firsts. You know, a lot of firsts could happen in this game. First time Ole Miss can win 11 games in its history of college football. First time Penn State and Ole Miss are playing uh, ever in college football. Um, we started, I guess we were here in 2014, we started the CFP having Ole Miss TCU was the first CFP game in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. We're ending the CFP era as we move into the New Year's Six, or I'm sorry, the 12 team playoff next year uh, with Ole Miss in our game. So kind of a first there as well. Um, so a little bit about our matchups. I said on press conference day, styles make great fights. You know, we have a tremendous offense against a tremendous defense. Um, the interesting thing in all that is if you look at uh, all the statistics, the turnovers are to me, and Lane will probably address this, turnovers are always key in a sporting event, and particularly in college football. And uh, Lane and, and their offense is very stingy in giving the ball up, but their defense is very good at getting the ball back. They're averaging close to uh, one turnover a game. Penn State's the same thing. They're averaging one and a half turnovers a game on the positive side. So we got the number one and number 12 team in turnover margin uh, which is going to be really interesting in the game. The other thing I think with uh, obviously Ole Miss top 10 quarterback, a top 10 running back, three wide receivers that have over 700 yards, which there's only three teams in FBS that have that. Ole Miss is one of them. Uh, but I think the hurry up offense is going to, to me, be a real interesting uh, uh, thing to watch because Penn State's defense is so good, but they have never dealt with the hurry up offense that Ole Miss applies. You don't always get substitutes in and critical plays when you play against Ole Miss in their hurry up offense. So I think that's going to be a real key. So that and turnovers, I think, are the keys to the game. Um, I know Lane will rip me about that, like I'm some kind of TV personality trying to analyze the game. But uh, a little bit about the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Uh, over 53% of our games have been decided by a touchdown or less. Very competitive atmosphere. And I think that's because we sell out, and uh, particularly Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's going to be an un unbelievable atmosphere in there. We'll have over 70,000 people. Uh, it's great sight lines. Um, and we've sold out 24 of the last 27 games. We expect this to be a sellout as well. Uh, our payouts will be $6 million uh, to uh, both teams. And um, this is our 56th Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. We were founded in 1968, the ninth oldest bowl game, but the first game founded for charity. And so we take that very serious as a part of our DNA. We gave recently $20 million to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta to start trials and find cures to eradicate childhood cancer. We now have 12 trials set with 37 kids in them, and our leukemia trial is moving to its second phase, which means they've tested it in adults, They've tested in animals successfully. They're gonna test it now in phase two in kids 12 to 18 years old. And if it works there, then they'll test it in little kids. So it's something that we wanna get into the end zone and hopefully find a cure for 
you know, a kid with cancer, give them another day, another month, another year, or hopefully a lifetime. All of us that have kids, we understand how, how important that is to give back. Um, we're the most charitable bull organization in the country. We've given $62 million to charity. Uh, so that giving back is a part of our DNA and very important to us. Um, we're, we'll donate $100,000 for this game, uh, $50,000 from Peach Bowl Inc., $50,000 from Chick-fil-A to each team to endow a $100,000 scholarship at Ole Miss uh, for Title I kids which in Atlanta, which means underprivileged kids get the opportunity. In some cases, the first kid to ever go to college will be uh, granted through this endowed scholarship at Ole Miss. A um, little bit about our bowl experience. We like to use the term live, laugh, and learn. You know, our bowl is a reward for the players. The players are the ones in the winter workouts, spring practice, summer camp. They're the ones that are they're working to achieve this. So we want to reward them. So live, they'll live in a great hotel, they'll travel great, get great gifts, eat great food like Chick-fil-A. Uh, they'll laugh. All kids want to do is compete, right? And so we have a battle for bowl week that every night there will be a competition against each team. Uh, for the WWE belt, about a 40 pound WWE belt that we give away every night. Then they give it back and they compete the next night for, for uh, the belt again. So it's a lot of fun. And then learn, you know, we'll take the team and, and coach uh, over to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta where they'll spend time with kids that didn't get out of the hospital for Christmas and they're probably never gonna get out of that hospital. So to give back during the holiday season is very important to those, those kids and their family. Um, we'll also take the team over to the College Football Hall of Fame. We want these kids to aspire to be inducted in this Hall of Fame. There's somebody from this team, you know, that could be inducted in 10 to 15 years in the College Football Hall of Fame. So we want them to see it, see the history of it, and, and aspire to play well enough to get into that College Football Hall of Fame. We'll also have our FCA breakfast for the players to uh, attend if they, if they choose to. And lastly, we'll have the opportunity to go to MLK, uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, and see where Dr. King actually spoke from the pulpit and was the pastor in Ebenezer Baptist Church to learn a little bit about the history of the civil rights movement in Atlanta. So with that, a little bit about the matchup, uh, a little bit about our bowl game, about our charity and the bowl week experience. So, so now I'm gonna do uh, two things. One is present to uh, Coach Kiffin and Keith Carter, a free sandwich from Chick-fil-A. And also, and I hope he'll accept, the official invitation to the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the 56th Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, to play Penn State in the New Year's Six Bowl game. So, Keith, hope you'll accept this. Congratulations. Thank you. And there you go. There's one. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Um, obviously, we are very excited to be going to Atlanta to, to play in the Peach Bowl. Um, obviously a very historic bowl and, and a lot of tradition there. Uh, a great matchup, as you mentioned. Um, and for us, you know, maybe no better city to go to than Atlanta for our fan base. And um, we feel like we're going to uh, ascend on Atlanta and, and take over Atlanta. So we're really excited about that and certainly uh, want to come down and, and put on a great showing uh, for, for Ole Miss and, and Rebel Nation. So thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. Keith, uh, this is an awesome opportunity. Our players, I mean, we kind of did this where I talked to you guys the day of when we found out about the bowl, but now to be around our players and um, to have some practices now that we know we're playing in this, um, a feel for the locker room. Our guys are so excited to be in this big of a bowl against such a, a historic team to play in Penn State and such a great city in Atlanta, um, which a number of our kids are, are from. Um, and I know the parents too talking to them uh, are really excited to get there. So this will be a tremendous matchup for us against a great coach, a great team of a lot of really good players. And I don't know the stats exact, but I saw something the other day, how many times Coach Franklin's won 10, 11 games just in the last you know eight years or something like that. So uh, they've been doing this for a while and are at a level where we want to get to. So this will be a great opportunity for us. 
right, we've got time for a few questions about the bowl, the invitation to match up a uh, game against Penn State. I think you said in the initial press conference that you didn't know much about Penn State, obviously. Um, just how much have you learned over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, again, it's been a challenge with um, our own practice, preparing for the game, and then the recruiting schedule. Um, that is, is what it is. So, um, you know, I'm a little more familiar. We're still not all the way into game planning with our players yet because we're so far out from the game. Um, but as we knew right away, a great defense led by you know their front, and. Um, now learning more, watching you know a really balanced offense that can really run the ball. Quarterback really takes care of the ball, like Gary mentioned. Both teams have done a really good job turnover wise. So, um, you know, this will probably be one of those games you got to play really well in all areas to go down to the wire and make some plays at the end. What's the top? Lane, a few of your players have announced over the weekend that they're going to be coming back for another season next year. How big of a boost does that provide for this team as they're getting ready for the bowl game? Yeah, again, this is a new era of college football. Uh, I've, I've said when it all started, there's nothing, there's no really model to look after because, you know, the NFL would never have this setup. You know, the free agency window with the portal opened up, whatever, a week or two ago, and we're still playing games. And, and have the postseason. So it'd be like the NFL opening preseason right before the playoffs or the Super Bowl. So um, it is what it is. Within that, you do kind of have these guys deciding earlier. You know, to me, this used to be more of a post after the bowl game decide, guys deciding to come back. But with nowadays and needing to figure out your roster faster, I think that sped that up, you know, because those guys wait that long and then all they, you have a bunch of guys go off and declare for the draft, you know, you're going to struggle to replace them because a lot of these portal guys have already, you know, signed other places. So very pleased with uh, how many guys came back. A lot of guys that were kind of tweener guys going back and forth that would have been draft picks, but maybe not as high as they like. So um, really neat that they, they feel that way about the program. They feel that way about the locker room that they would choose to come back, which a lot of times doesn't happen because their dream is to play in the NFL. So to put that off, to put that on hold for a year, I think says a lot about the culture in the locker room. There's a lot of stuff that comes with it with a New Year's Six game from uh, availabilities and activities and all that stuff, not just beforehand, but during that whole week itself. Um, did you learn anything from the 2021 Sugar Bowl trip that, you know, I don't know how to handle out all of the outside stuff for a game like this? I mean, I've been fortunate to be in a lot of, a lot of these games and playoff games and um, I don't really want to jinx myself, but I was in this bowl game um, as a head coach once before. Uh, so I think that the challenge is always, you know, to balance the kids enjoying it because it's a reward, like Gary said, for their, their year, but also them understanding there's a lot of work to do too and find that balance, especially later in the week as you get closer to the game. Kind of on the same note of players coming back and with signing day coming up. Well, yes, ever since the Grove Collective has launched this, what can you say about the job that they've done in order to kind of keep Ole Miss, you know, on sustaining a championship level? Yeah, I think Walker Jones has done an unbelievable job um, with everybody in the collective. And, um, you know, that's where we are in college football and college sports, but especially college football that I know of, um, how important that is. And so they've done a great job and put us in position um, you know, to have success next year, but also go back to this year and look at the portal and look at even guys that could have left here, like Quinshawn after a year, um, you know, and start looking at our roster without portal additions, um, you know, that had a lot of options of places to go or current guys and it's a much different team. I have a two-fold question. Do you have anybody on your roster now that you anticipate opting out or who has already informed you they're opting out? And then secondly, um, how many guys on your roster are still in the decision-making process about whether to go to the NFL or to stay another year? Yeah, I think we're still in conversations. Um, I think maybe there's probably even players still deciding the opt-out part maybe even potentially because – we're still a long ways away from the game, and we're not really treating these practices as game week practices. So, um, and 
uh, I think the majority of the guys, whether they're going to the NFL or coming back, have decided. Um, maybe they haven't all posted. I don't know all that. But, um, you know, that's for them to tell. Uh, I've kind of screwed that up before with Jackson. So um, I think I know from conversations with them who's coming back and who's who would be going on to the NFL. Um, are there any certain needs or area on your team that you are targeting in the transfer portal? Uh, yeah, anywhere where there's really good players that can help us win. So um, I've kind of forget people that have covered us. I've kind of always went more to the model of, you know, um, best available players because you still don't know. Your roster is always changing nowadays. You got another window, you know, in the spring that guys can go in the portal. So. Um, I kind of look more at best available and try to find the best best players that you can get. Is there any, at this point, any concern level with the offensive line as far as health goes up to this point? Well, <clears throat> I usually don't talk about injuries. I think it's well known Micah um, would still be out. So outside of that, I would anticipate everybody playing. Um, which we were not at full strength, obviously, um, after what the third play of the Georgia game. So um, I anticipate that being in a better position with this long layoff. <clears throat> uh, unusual to have this much time, uh, you know, be between games as opposed to a regular season. Um, does that time off favor? Do you think an offensive game plan or, or a defensive one? I don't think there's really analytics to show that. Um, you know, we used to say it was better for offense because of the tackling part of the long layoff, but I don't really have data that actually shows that. That's kind of just more in our old coaching book of what's supposed to be that when you have it that long off of tackling, you usually struggle at the beginning of the season and you struggle again in a bowl game after a long layoff. But I don't, I don't know that to actually be a fact. Anything else for Coach? We did, uh, if we have any questions for Gary or Keith as well, uh, happy to answer those. If you guys have any questions from our side. Yeah. Gary, I'm just kind of curious. When On Saturday night after the championship games, what was your expectation as to what your matchup would be? And when did you kind of get wind that it would be Ole Miss, Penn State? Yeah, it's interesting. I've been doing this for 26 years. And probably until 2014, it was my job to go to my board and make the selection of the team. So I had all the analytics and the data, you know, planned out. And I remember in 2014, when we joined the CFP. I called Bill Hancock on Saturday night and said, Bill, you're going to call me and let me know who we have, right? And um, he laughed. And then he said, Gary, he says, you'll find out when the rest of America finds out. And that's what happened on, on Sunday. We were sitting there and waiting to see who ESPN was, what two logos were going to pop up on the uh, – on the board next to the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. So we have no say so. Um, you know, we just wait and see like you guys and like the teams do who we're going to be able to host. And we're very blessed to have Ole Miss. I know Lane from, you know, back in 2009 and 2016, and we had Ole Miss in the kickoff game with Lane coaching. So I think a lot about Lane. I don't know that there's a uh, many people that have the offensive mind that he has. And to be able to take that and take it to uh, another level with putting a whole team together and bringing Ole Miss from where they are to be in the New Year's Six Bowl games. And now with the opportunity on the verge to win 11 games, which has never been done in Ole Miss history, is quite a, quite a credit to, uh, to Lane and the program he's developed. I have one for Keith. So um, are you comfortable with your position right now, um, NIL-wise, um, compared to your peers in the SEC? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as, as Lane alluded to earlier, I think our collective is doing a fantastic job. Um, I think our Athletics Foundation is doing a great job in, in collaboration with, with the uh, collective as well. Um, but as we all know, this is a changing landscape. And I think um, some of the standards and kind of the – you know, where we were last year is, is totally different than where we are this year, and it'll be different next year. Um, so you just have to make sure you're staying proactive in the space and 
Um, as Coach Kiffin has said many, many times, you know, not to just uh, think outside the box, but to create a new box. And I feel like here at Ole Miss, we've, we've done that.